What's up, you guys? This is Nate the Effing Great, and it's time for another movie talk, and it's another double feature. So, I'm going to be talking about two movies that I saw in the last 24 hours, which, uh, honestly, they kind of relate in a weird kind of way. That being uh, Long Shot and Ugly Dolls. I know, a rated R movie and a kid's movie. How the hell can these two possibly be relatable? Well... Let me just explain. So, uh, Long Shot is the comedy movie that talks about uh, Seth Rogen being a, uh, excuse me, he is be he is being this um, this uh, publisher, this editor, uh, who kind of wants to you know just I, I, one of the things that he mentions right off the bat is that he's Jewish. So, I guess it's one of those things that. Um, we're basically, you know, it's kind of funny because the first thing we see is him going into a uh, anti-Semitic group, and he basically is just faking the fact that you know, oh yeah, I hate the Jews, I hate this, and blah blah blah. It's so cotton picking funny just seeing that, um, and we see uh, him get exposed. He finds a way to record these anti-Semitic guys. His newspaper deal gets bought off but he just quits voluntarily he's just like i'm not working for this guy i'm not working for the guy who's buying us out and then uh Char charlie's i believe is her name she was uh for me i knew her as the woman from 50 ways to die a uh, million ways to die in the west not 50 ways i'm thinking like the, uh adam Sutherland fifty first 50 first dates anyway so she is basically a uh, secretary of state and she wants to basically run for president president basically saying you know hey we're going to put you on this tour and we want you to you know, talk to them, and you'll get my endorsement to, you know, run for president. Well, one of the things that they say is that, you know, she stands out and everything, except humor. Now you can kind of see that's kind of where it gets a little bit predictable. She, um, I will say this, that this was kind of something that threw me off a little bit, is that um, how Seth Rogen's character and how Charlize's character know each other, a lot different than I was expecting. Um she was actually the babysitter for him, and it was only like a three-year difference between the two of them, which, honestly, that's kind of an interesting twist. I'm like, oh, well, okay. Um, that's kind of, that's cool. Um, they shared like a little moment when they uh, were at his place. Um, basically, you know, they catch up, and she basically says, hey, I want you to kind of, you know, help me write my speeches, add a little more humor to them. Uh, and at first you kind of do see that, you know, Seth Rogen, he's kind of set in his ways. He doesn't want to, you know, change anything that's going on with his, uh, with it, with his character. But and, and as time goes on, you know, she's starting to kind of understand where he's coming from. She's trying to think like, okay, this is kind of remind me of when I was in high school, what my principles were. And those principles are slowly starting to help you know, build up her career. They get a relationship along the way. Um, she ends up falling for him. He ends up falling for her. Uh, but then they have a situation where they get blackmailed and they have to break it off and they have to not do this the system that they were doing. And then the moment comes, she drops everything. She basically just says, you know what? I'll tell you this right now. She tells the truth. She's like one of the most honest politicians ever. Uh, they end up together, and she ends up being the woman's president regardless. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, that was a plot hole that then that was like a swerve we didn't really need. Um, but yeah, what, if I talk about this movie, I will say that one of the things that surprised me the most is the chemistry between Charliza and Seth Rogen. It is absolutely crazy how well these two work together. Um, they bounce off each other so well when it comes to the comedy. She can have kind of like this serious kind of demeanor, and then he's just kind of like, oh, okay, I'll just kind of... Act. He does kind of like the simple Seth Rogen deal, and I kind of compared it to a lot of the other movies that he did. Um, and honestly, I will tell you this, that one thing that kind of is a factor is the fact that he's always worked with blondes. And here's the, where I'm coming from. So he worked with Heidi Klum in Knocked Up. He worked with uh, Elizabeth Banks in Zack and Miri Make a Porno. And then he also works with uh, Charliza in this one. All three of those movies are some of the best comedies in 
in honestly all of a lot of the comedies. I mean, when you look at some of his best works, those are the ones. And he's worked with three different blondes in those movies. So it's like Seth Rogen just continue working with the blondes. Um, I like the fact that uh, the sexual jokes are so funny because the sex literally feels like it lasts about a minute and a half. It's like that short. And they make a joke about saying like, oh my... Like my 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 small my small my small dick and blah blah blah. It's like, dude, really? You're making these jokes about what? <laughs> it's just the, kind of those things that make it really, just absolutely funny. And there comes a point where uh, Charlize's character, uh, Charlotte Field, I'm sorry, she wants to basically just get effed up with like drugs and stuff like that, and. It's one of those things where you just see how crazy she gets after she's, you know, blasted with all these drugs. And then literally she gets called and says, hey, we need you to do a statement. We need you to, you know, help these people with a terrorist negotiation. And then she has to do an interview like immediately after that. It's so cotton picking funny um, because... The guy is basically say, saying, you know, match his intensity with your intensity. And she's just basically just taking the phone. She's in a corner. She's smoking. She's just literally like, look, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. My boss is a dick. And he's like, th-. she's like relating to him. And he's kind of just like, um, I was not expecting that this would happen. Okay. And it eventually worked out it actually worked out it's so funny there's even oh my gosh there's this one scene that's even like disturbingly funny is that um charlie's is charlotte field's um assistant the two assistants that she has they end up get, hooking up together and it's just so funny how they just <laughs> come out and do it because uh i think it was after um seth rogan's character and charlie's that they you know they've had their deal He's leaving. He's basically just trying to think like, okay, what's going on with this and blah, blah, blah. Um, Because literally at this point, she's trying to get a little more physical and he's just like freaking out about this. And outcome, and after he's, you know, leaving the room, he's just kind of freaking out like, what the hell did I just witness? Follow that up with him seeing the two assistants coming out of another room. And he's like, oh, what am I seeing here? Oh God, I'm going to bleach my eyes. It's so God freaking funny. Oh my gosh, it was a good movie. It really was. And it does kind of dive a little bit into the humor side and how stupid sometimes politics can be. Because when you look at politics and even at celebrity deals, everybody's got to look great. They have to be connected with the right people. They have to be with the right person with their relationships. They have to make the right decisions. They can never really be themselves. They have to live up to that status quo and they hit on that so hard. They also even have little points where they talk about Marvel movies and basically saying, hey, you never really live until you've actually seen a TV series or you've seen a movie in its entirety. You can't just read the synopsis and say, oh, I know what's going to happen for this. Because it's different from, you know, from the movie experience. And that was really cool. I liked that. Um, yeah, for this one, I give it... A four out of five, honestly, out of four out of five stars. I liked it. I thought it was fun. I loved the chemistry between the two of them. Uh, there were a lot of interesting side characters that don't necessarily stand out, but they kind of add a little more fuel to the humorous fire that they've had. So I liked it. I thought it was cool. All right, so the other one was Ugly Dolls. This one was one that got apparently not so well received by critics uh for me i remember watching this movie and one of the reasons why i think that people are not big on to this movie is the fact that it feels so much like a musical more than a movie it feels more like a musical you do definitely do see a lot of songs coming out during this uh story i definitely don't need to really explain too much they a bunch of ugly dolls they're basically living their lives but then they, there's the one Who's basically just saying, well, what is it like up there? And what would it be like to be, you know, loved by a child? And, you know, they go up, they go to the Institute of Protection, and they kind of see that these, you know, dolls that are, you know, perfect 
have their own insecurities and they also have their own differences. But unfortunately, uh, Lou, the main villain for this movie, uh, played by Nick Jonas, by the way, which is hilarious. Um, he basically expects perfection, and you kind of realize that he's got his own perfections as well, more towards the end of the movie. But in all honesty, this was just one of those movies that it hits a lot of very interesting soft spots for me because you kind of see how um, people who are different are mistreated and how they are just not given the chance that they deserve. And you definitely can see that in this movie. Um, just because they look different, they just seem like they don't deserve to have that chance of being who they want to be. And when it seems like, oh, they're some of the things that they've done, they're, they're basically during the movie, they find out, oh, well, we were just mistakes by creation. But they find out, you know, there was a reason why they were made like that. And it's one of those stories that just hits so many really good points. And it hits so many different levels of feelings. It does a fantastic job. This, Oh my gosh, the songs are absolutely great. Um, the first song right off the bat, of course, you know, the, it couldn't get better than this. It's really good. There's the uh, Unbreakable song uh, later on where basically talking about how, you know, you're unbreakable as long as you are confident in yourself. That is a beautiful song. Um, I thought that the Lou, um, the Lou song where he basically is calling everybody else that's not perfect like him ugly. It's one of those songs where it fits him. It works for his character. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, in the end, it does kind of, it, it is a predictable story. And that's what I love about it is that it's a simple, straightforward movie. Um... No really major surprises. I, I, I you know I would probably say one one su surprise in there, but I'm gonna leave that for you guys if you ever want to watch it. Um, but yeah, I mean, in all honesty, it's not a bad movie at all. It's it's fun. It's easygoing. It's easy to follow. It's not one of those movies where it just you know goes into like a deeper situation. Um, I would give this one, I'm going to give it a three and a, three and a half out of, out of five. It has some moments where, you know, it gets a little cheesy at times, but it does have some jokes that really hit very hard. Um, I love a lot of the characters. Um, Pitbull, Pitbull as Ugly Dog is one of the funnier characters. I will say that he has some one-liners that are just so very well done. Uh, Wanda Sykes character is very funny. Uh, I will say this, I forgot that Gabriel Iglesias was involved in this. Um, his voice was different. That was probably why I couldn't figure out which one was him. Uh, the songs, like I said, were great. It's visually beautiful because it has the bright colors uh, when it needs to have it. And then it has kind of some like the gray bleak areas. But it's a really cute, nice little story. And like I said at the top of the show... These two movies fit very well because they both fit into the same category of because somebody's different, they're going to be judged because they're different. And that's always the sad thing is that they don't deserve to be judged because of that. They should not be judged on their looks, how they act, or how they treat people. They should really give people chances to be them because they could be the difference maker when it comes to so many different life, you know, life experiences. And though these two movies definitely do prove that, that it's cool to stay with the status quo for a little bit, but if you're stuck in there and you're trying to impress everybody, you're changing your hair, the makeup, the clothes, you're doing all this stuff. You're only doing it because you think it's going to better yourself in the eyes of others. And it's only going to harm yourself and how you look at yourself because you're not going to be the same person you were before. That is probably the most important thing that I can take out of these two movies is that it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to really, you know, just look at yourself, be happy with who you are. And honestly, don't change who you are. You are who you are. And you were put on here for a reason. 
that is what I can say about these two movies, is that they do prove that. So, that is going to end this review, you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening to this another edition of Movie Talks. I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.